What's going on, YouTube? Black Lebowski on the move. Quiet Sunday night. And uh, I was just thinking about the uh, relationship that drugs and alcohol play. And um, I guess you could say black mediocrity. Um, coming up, I've seen countless human beings, male and female, get reduced, get obliterated by um, engaging in a lifestyle of uh, drugs and alcohol. And I don't really see a campaign uh, say as strong as something like uh, Black Lives Matter dealing with um, substance abuse. And sometimes I wonder why when drugs and alcohol seem to me to be much more detrimental to the development of us as a people, you know? Um, I can, you know, it's, it's almost, it's really hard to even begin to count how many people I know or have known who were phenomenal individuals one way or another and you know unfortunately drugs and alcohol reduced them to you know less uh you know who they originally were or are um i remember this guy his name was rich you know rest in peace rich rich was um rich was much older than me rich was close you know, he was about close to my mother and father's age, but Rich was a genius. In my neighborhood, I think Rich may have been the first person to uh, purchase his own home. He was working at a, um, I want to say Boeing or Ryan, one of these corporations. He was like a, some type of engineer, but Rich was getting money. Rich, Rich at this, during this time, this is, uh, this is during that crack era, and Rich was legal. Rich was legal, and Rich had everything that hustlers had, easy. And unfortunately for Rich, he um, he was introduced to a substance by a female and subsequently lost everything that he cherished. But Rich never lost his gift, his talent. Um, but the drug eventually, uh, eventually crushed and Rich died. But I used to watch Rich on do contract work. Like a lot of the stuff now that we see uh, different communities doing as far as rehabbing and plumbing, and electricity, and any type of hands-on building work Rich could do. Or Rich could come into a house and rehab it alone. He was that good. And um, he, like I said, he didn't make it. You know, in my area, we had Lynn Bias. Lynn Bias, some would argue that was, um, some say better than Michael Jordan. And cocaine, again, you know, it reduced him. You know, I know guys who went on the other route, you know, the route of not the abuse of selling it, I mean, not the abuse of using, but the selling route. Some, you know, I got buddies, people that I grew up with that have release dates, 2067, you know, some life, you know, some in the ground, some with major body injuries, paralysis, you know, loss of limbs. You know. I know people who have three, four generations of people murdered in the same family, you know, and all of this stuff rotates in one way or another around drugs and alcohol, you know. The prettiest woman I ever saw in my life, I'm not going to say her name, but she was she was gorgeous, she was much older than me, but as a child, I had a crush on her. And uh, if you just saw her, you know, before, 
before the drug ravaged her. She was crazy. I mean, like I said, she was physically, I haven't seen anything, anything that matched with her to this day. And she was beautiful inside and out, you know, but the drug again took over. And alcohol, no different. You know, how many people have threw their lives away and destroyed their lives as a result of that bottle, you know, through broken families, loss of jobs, vehicle accidents, cirrhosis to the liver, you name it, comes with that bottle. More, I heard a scholar say that al alcohol is the mother of all filth, and I completely agree with that. So, like I said, I'm just rambling and, and hoping that some type of campaign is established that's as strong and as funded as Black Lives Matter to address drugs and alcohol in the black community. You know, you see these liquor stores, shit, and some of these gas stations where I live, they're selling K2 out of the gas station. K2, alcohol, marijuana, pills, I mean, it's like, it seems like it's a concerted effort to keep our brains clouded, you know? Some of us from the age of 13, 14, 13, 14 years old, you're on something until you make that choice to become clear-minded, you know? And a clear mind is much more able, and this is not an opinion, this is a fact, a clear mind is much more apt and able to resolve problems, situations, challenges, and a clouded or high or drunk mind any day of the week. You know, you study one thing, people, they say what they say about our former president, Donald Trump, but Donald Trump had a major advantage over a lot of his competition, which was Donald does not drink alcohol. Donald does not consume drugs. You look at Floyd Mayweather. He does not consume alcohol. And he does not use drugs. Floyd, 50, a lot of guys that have accomplished major things. And some of them, and these, these guys are pretty much able to keep it. They refrain from any mind altering substance. So, you know, like I said, it's money, influence, and everything else out here to make some type of program happen to get these children, or, or not get the children, take the allure and the social, uh, I guess you can say social coolness away from popping bottles, popping pills, and ingesting anything that's gonna eventually destroy you. Uh, you know, if any prayer that I would have for the youth, you know, because they're gonna struggle anyway, clear-minded or not. But if I had one thing that I could do, it would be to have some type of magic potion where it was unappealing for children and young adults and adults alike to blast their mind off anyway man push sobriety you know push that you know i like to see a hashtag for that enough of this fake shit peace